Hi guys, we're going to talk today about nebulizing various nutraceuticals. And in particular, we're going to discuss how to use glutathione or one of its precursors as a vehicle to be able to help improve our immune system, scavenge all kinds of things that we want to get rid of in our body. And so we're going to talk about this unique technique to be able to um, administer this nutraceutical. I'm Dr. Tim with Optimize Wellness Center. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. So I'm going to go through a quick review. I've got some notes here and I'm going to give you a short demonstration in addition. So first off, as I mentioned, we're going to be using a nebulizer as a mechanism of administration of this. And I'm going to talk about the reasons why we're going to be doing that as well. Now, first off, why would we nebulize in particular? Well, we want to have strong barriers in our body. We have barriers like our skin, and we have uh, our intestinal barrier. We have barriers in our sinuses. We also have barriers in our lungs, as well as our blood-brain barrier. And <clears throat> there are a variety of things that sometimes can breach these barriers, and these can cause all kinds of problems. One of the things I've been working on recently with a variety of my patients is dealing with mold and mycotoxins, and these just wreak havoc on people. And so we need to find ways to get rid of some of the resulting toxins from those mold spores. Mold is an example. These mycotoxins cleave off these tight junctions in your gut. There are these junctions that create that lumen in there. And then these um, proteins get into our lungs. And then this can result in, down the roads, what's called as leaky gut, where our gut is not able to create a tight environment where those um, food particles are only being absorbed when they need to throughout that entire gastrointestinal tract. In addition to leaky gut, it can result in leaky sinuses. And this causes a whole variety of problems where these toxins can then enter into our body. So we want to have the good things in and the bad things out. <clears throat> so this is one of the ways we can do this. I'm going to share a couple of fun facts with you. So our nasal sinuses, these ones all the way up here by our nose, right? <clears throat> these nasal sinus tissues does more detoxification through what's called a cytokine uh, P450 pathway. Don't worry about the name here, but that is the pathway. Then does our liver. Now, this is really amazing because we think of that as a phase one part of our um, biodetoxification pathways. And we often think of this as our most powerful detox organ. And while it is especially powerful, we actually are doing a lot more all the way up here right from the beginning when we take that first breath in. So, uh, lungs have an epithelial layer, that's the kind of tissue that it has in its layer there, in one of the immediate layers, and this has a higher concentration of glutathione than does any other tissue in our entire body. So this gives rise to how important it is for us to be conscious of our lungs and to protect them, especially in times like these where we have all kinds of C viruses, those kinds. Uh, as well as other kinds of pollutants in the air. Uh, many of us who live here in the West Coast, um, we have lots of fires, unfortunately, that pollute our air in addition. And then we can also have things like mycotoxins from mold as well. So those are just a few of the examples. So <clears throat> we have to ex ask ourselves, uh, what is the goal here? Well, the mucus inside of our uh, nasal cavity, this phlegm here, is meant to be a um, actually a mechanism to help to capture those kinds of bacteria and viruses and other things, and then to be able to export them out. Um, and so this can help us to resist infections. Then also, um, we want to, in general, reduce the pathogenic burden. So that meaning how strong or how effective can any pathogens be, and we want to reduce or eliminate or mitigate that as much as possible so that we also reduce the possibility of us getting infected. All right, and then we want to strengthen our barriers in addition. And so what we mean by strengthening our barriers is making sure that they have good integrity, they're not leaking, and that they have all the nutrients that are necessary to support them so that they can continue to fight the battle. So who should consider nebulizing? Well, there's actually quite a long list of individuals, and you might be one of them, or you might know someone in your family members, um, your loved ones, colleagues, and others who might need this. 
So individuals with chronic sinus infections, otherwise known as rhinitis, um, or seasonal allergies, individuals who are exposed to air pollutants. And that could be anyone who lives within uh, a mile of a highway. There's exceptionally high pollution that disseminates over that one mile, interestingly. Also, individuals with asthma. Now, there is a caveat specific to asthma, and so we do test for that. Um, and so that, that is something that we are cognizant of. Also, individuals who have lung diseases. These, uh, and, and these also are individuals who can really benefit from utilizing nebulizing technologies. Okay, mold detoxification, multiple chemical sensitivities, um, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, um, as well as individuals who have cystic fibrosis, and then emphysema, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, um, HIV individuals with respiratory symptoms, as well as folks who are experiencing chronic otitis media, um, and this is with effusion. So this is essentially an infection inside of your ear and where you have um, some, some liquid that's coming out, some effusion there. So what does a nebulizer do? Well, nebulizer, we often put a variety of things in. So this is the nebulizer here. It's essentially an air compressor that um, we're going to show you how that functions in a moment. And then we use these specialized little cups here that help to um, create a fluid into very small particles. And then when we put this together, we're going to breathe through this here. And I'm going to show you again all that in just a moment. <laughs> So we can use things like saline, meaning salt, um, and so we use this as a mechanism to break down the phlegm or the, that we were talking about earlier that helps to clear the bacteria out of these cavities, your mouth or your uh, nose. We can use things like colloidal silver, which has long been known as an antibacterial, antiviral, and antipathogenic, and especially safe in addition. We can also use things like <clears throat> even fresh garlic, we can squeeze that and put that in there. We can use things like essential oils as a method of administration. Um, and then we can use things like glutathione as well. So we can use direct glutathione, but the problem is actually the body tends to really prefer using a precursor and then converting that to the glutathione. So NEC is one of those that we can utilize uh, for that there. So again, um, for individuals for whom have uh, lung infections, we can use a combination of these things to be able to help them out, or if they have sinus infections, or if they have the cystic fibrosis, or all those other things we just mentioned a moment ago. So glutathione, by the way, is really the ultimate scavenger in the body, and it is scavenging for all those things that we don't want, and it's going to pick them up, and it's going to bind to them, and take them out, and get rid of them. It is an antioxidant, and it really packs a punch in the body. It helps out to really keep you healthy. So it's going to help to detoxify what are called as reaction oxygen species. It's going to remove heavy metals from the body. It's also going to um, help to deal with organic compounds and toxins that may be bound as well. And it facilitates phase two metabolism. And it also, and lastly, it's going to be really helpful to protect the mitochondria. And this is the powerhouse of the cell. So every cell in your body has a powerhouse, and glutathione is going to help to protect that. All right. So... Um, often we use these that is glutathione and it can help to um, uh, protect us, especially as we age, we tend to have less glutathione in our body. And then um, it's going to help to also lower um, the possibility of these infections that we talked about. All right. So again, it's going to help to serve to protect the epithelial layers and the uh, lung lining fluids, uh, as well as to facilitate oxygen exchange, and that's part of that protection of the mitochondria. So these are really powerful things. So enough about the story, guys. Let's talk about the administration and how we're going to do this. So we've got a little receptacle or cup here that we utilize. Now I have combined some of these things together already into this tincture here so that you don't have to be bored by that part of the process. So I'm going to take some of this here and I'm going to pour this into the bottom of this uh, little reservoir or receptacle. And I'm just going to put a little bit in here just to begin with just so that I can show you how this works. 
And so I'm going to close this up just to make sure that I don't uh, accidentally bump it. Sealing that off. I'm going to put the top of this layer on here as well. And then I'm going to connect the bottom piece here, which is connected into the nebulizer. So the nebulizer itself is going to be a little bit noisy in a moment. And what you're going to see is it's going to be pumping air through this hose and it's going to be fractionalized in here. And then it's going to create a mist. And I'm going to be breathing through this, and some of it will be expelled here as well as I breathe through this. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so you can probably already start to see a little bit of the um, fog essentially coming out here. And so I'm going to start breathing this. Now I can breathe and just keep breathing straight through here and expel the rest through here as well. So this process is going to take me a matter of minutes, maybe it could be anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes depending upon what we put inside of here and how long it might take for us to be able to get through all this. And we would have people just relaxing while they're doing this. They can breathe in deeply to get way down into the bottom alveoli to make sure that we get it distributed really well into the body. This can also be really effective with kids. Sometimes they have trouble getting their mouth on this and keeping it there. And so sometimes we just put this right close to them so they're breathing that in just immediately there, as you can see, it's just really close. So we just let them breathe in a relaxed fashion there. There also are masks that you can use. Let me turn that off. There also are masks that you can use, and these masks can be another way of getting this onto the individual um, and making sure that they're getting as much administration as possible. So guys, I hope this was really helpful for you, learning about how to use a nebulizer, what we might use it for, some of the things we might uh, be looking for in terms of the patient base that we've been working with, as well as some of the things we might utilize inside of the nebulizer. If you found this interesting, um, please make sure to like it, share this with others, and, and post a comment below if you have some questions or if you're utilizing this in a way that we hadn't thought about. I'd be really interested to read through that and comment back with you guys. Hey guys, thanks again for taking the time to listen in. Dr. Tim with Optimize Wellness Center. Have a great day.